Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a custom screen overlay inside of XSplit Gamecaster for you guys. We're going to be using GIMP, but you could use Photoshop in order to tear apart a overlay from online and break it into separate images so that you can position and set up everything correctly inside of XSplit Gamecaster. So it's kind of a hybrid tutorial here. So of course you'd be welcome to design your own graphics, but for the sake of making the tutorial quicker, I'm going to be pulling on a template from online. You can pretty much Google search for this kind of thing. As you can see, DeviantArt is a good site for finding these kinds of graphics for use. So once you've gone ahead and either found or designed a basic overlay for yourself, we're going to want to load that into GIMP or Photoshop, whichever tool you want to use. If you look at my GIMP editor, you can see that I've already gone ahead and removed some of the text that was next to this YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook social media icons. This is actually going to be important when you load everything into Gamecaster, because in Gamecaster you can dynamically edit the text right onto your widgets, which would be like text that displays on screen for these areas. It's better to have it edited inside of Gamecaster rather than permanently saved to the image file so that you can change it later if you need to. So like I did with the social icons at the top, I'm also going to change the your name area down here. So because this is just a gray background at the bottom, I can basically select this area and cut away the text. So I'm going to take the lasso tool and I'm just going to draw a circle around the areas that I am going to replace with the background gray color. Ideally, if you were able to find a Photoshop or GIMP design template, which actually has these fields editable, you could just remove it by deleting the layer for the text. But in this case, if you don't, if you're just working with a pure image file, then uh, doing this will work instead. So, so now that I have the selection made, I can hit Control X on the right layer in order to cut away the background. Before I fill it with the paint bucket tool, I'm pretty sure you want to turn off anti-aliasing so that all of the edges are filled evenly with this color. And it does look like there's still a little bit of remainder there uh, on the edges of the selection. So we can just kind of clean that up with the brush tool. So I'm going to switch over to the paint brush. Make sure that the size is big enough that we can fill it in. Um, Pixel will work here, whatever brush stroke you want to use. It'll be easier for you if you set hardness to 100% so that it fills in these pixels completely when you start drawing over it. Uh, make sure dynamics is off too because we're just filling in pixels here. So we don't want anything to happen like the areas to be partially filled rather than completely filled. And once we go ahead and clean all of this up, we should have basically an empty area where in XSplit Gamecaster, we can now fill this area in with our actual gamer tag. Now, uh, one more thing that we want to do in GIMP before we import all of this is to actually split the different sections into their own layers and export them individually. Uh, the reason for that is that we want to be able to edit and move around um, each of these sections individually. So before we export these three sections as their own separate image, we want to scale the canvas down to each of the sections so that we can export them as images that only have the size of these areas. That way when we bring it into Gamecaster, they'll have controls for scaling these images uh, right on the edges of where the pixels actually are. So in the end, it will look and feel a lot better. So to do that, we should use the rectangular select tool to draw areas around where we want each separate zone defined. So for the webcam, we basically want to use the rectangular select tool around the webcam area, uh, making sure to get all of the visible pixels. And then with that selection made, you'll get this white and black line going around it. We go to image and then fit canvas to selection, which will scale the canvas down to just what we selected there. And we can take this and go up to the file menu, export as, give it an image name. So I'll do webcam.png. It's important that it's a PNG so that you keep the background transparency, basically making it so that wherever there's no visible pixels, that everything behind it is invisible and can show uh, the webcam behind it, for instance, or the game footage. So webcam.png, export as, and defaults are generally going to be fine here. And now we need to hit Control Z and do the same thing for the top bar and the gamer tag. So I'm going to use the rectangular select tool, draw a rough box around the top bar, and then do image fit canvas to selection, file export as top social bar dot PNG. Export that. And then let's do the same thing with the gamer tag. So selecting the area and then go up to image fit canvas to selection file export as gamertag.png. 
Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and set up our custom scene inside of Gamecaster. So in Gamecaster, hit the add scene button and then choose create your own. So we'll create it from scratch here. So once it's created, click on the edit button by hovering over the custom section and the scene editor should pop up. So inside of the scene editor, we're going to need to start by adding three image widgets for those sections that we exported. So hit add widget and then in the middle, you'll have image here. So hit add widget and then choose image to upload or you can drag them directly from the desktop into this area. So I hit choose image to upload and I located the webcam.png file from my desktop. So you should see the image appear here. Uh, just know if there's any issues there, everything should appear. All the pixels should be visible. And then you can go ahead and hit upload. So now, because we used fit canvas to selection, the bounds of this image roughly match where the webcam itself is, which makes it easier to drag around the screen and rotate or scale, whatever you need. So I'm going to position this where I want it, which it theoretically would be roughly where it was in the original template. Um, we can also right click on the image in the widget section and rename that. So I'll call it uh, webcam box. And then we repeat the process for the other two images. So select the gamertag.png, hit upload. And now we can position this at the bottom of the screen. Note that if you get the image towards the center that it will automatically snap to the middle, which is probably what you want in our case. So I'll just snap that to the bottom and the middle and it's fit nicely. So let's rename that as well and we'll call it gamer tag. Then we need to add widget one more time. So top social bar PNG hit upload and position it at the top middle or wherever your template had it defined. And I will rename that top social bar. Next, we need to add in text fields for the YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, social media, the gamer tag at the bottom and a camera source for our webcam. Because the camera source is the most important, let's add that first. So add widget and search for camera and camera source should pop open there. So add that widget in and we want to make this source have roughly the same bounds of our webcam display area. So using the stretch tools on the corners of the camera source, let's stretch that of our surrounding box. And now when we actually use the template, the webcam should appear there or any other camera source which we happen to be using. Okay, next we're going to need four text areas. So let's hit add widget and you can search text to find it. So a text element and we position those where we want to display our name or social media. So here I'll position this roughly where it needs to go for the YouTube. In the bottom left properties, we can define the text. So I might put in Chris tutorials here. You can change the font size if you need to or the font type itself. So I like to use uh, let's actually go with Babis Noe and increase the font size a bit. So we could make that 36 and that looks pretty good there. So the advantage of setting up the text fields inside of Gamecaster or your tool of choice is that you can customize it later on without accessing your image files from GIMP or Photoshop. So to make it quicker to define the Twitter and Facebook, let's actually copy those over. So I will hit the copy widget or control C and then hit paste widget in the widget section or control V in order to paste a copy of that. So I'll take this second text and move it over here. I may want to rename these widgets as well. So I'll remain name this one uh, text.youtube and the other one text twitter. And then let's control C control V to copy it one more time. And we'll move that over for Facebook. Note that these text fields will automatically align to each other if you keep it snapping to these three guiding lines, which is really nice. So let's rename that text Facebook. And now control Z, control V one more time, move it down here for the gamer tag. And for this one, we will stretch its size and probably center it. So in the properties, let's center the text field there and increase the size by a lot. So I'm thinking more like a 70 here, stretch the bounds so that it fits properly and kind of get it aligned there with that little controller icon. Then finally, just rename that. So I'll call it text gamer tag. And now let's save our progress in the top right. You can hit control S or the little icon in the top right corner. Now, technically we could be done, but in order to make it easier to edit these things later on, I would recommend that you group the different widgets together where they belong. So like the camera source with the camera box, and the gamer tag text with the gamer tag image. 
So to do that, we need group widgets. So click on add widgets one more time and search for group. And when you do the grouping, it's basically a folder or a directory. We just drag the items that should belong together into the group folder. So I will do text gamer tag into the first group and the gamer tag image into that group. And we will call it gamer tag group. So just right click and rename there. And now we can close that and repeat the process for the other two sections. So group, and I'll call this webcam group. And we'll drag the camera source into here as well as the webcam box. One more time for the top bar. So I will call this social icons group. And we'll just drag the other four things into here. So this helps for organization as well as moving stuff around. So now that everything's a group, I can select the group and move everything around all at once. So you see that the camera box as well as the camera source moves at the same time now, which is super handy and may save you some time if you need to customize things later on. Uh, but one problem you might notice here is that the text has disappeared. That's because of ordering. So we need the things that are supposed to be on top to be on top in terms of the hierarchy. So the top social bar image should actually be on the bottom of this icons group. So drag that down below and the text should reappear. The same thing with the gamer tag group. Make sure the image is at the bottom and that the text layer is on top. So now it's just a little bit of reorganizing things, make sure, making sure that your labels are where you want them to be and the right size, all of that jazz. But pretty much you're good to go. So when you're done here, hit save one more time. Click on the X button on the top right hand corner. And now you can select your new custom template. So click on the custom scene and now everything should correspond to what you had set up with your custom template. Now note, you'll still wanna make sure everything looks good. So for instance, in this case, if I look at it really closely, I can see that the camera source should be stretched a little bit bigger. You may want to add in uh, additional widgets such as tipping or follower notifications that slide onto the screen. But for setting up a basic custom template, that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my future video content.